Barry here again and in this video I'm going to show you how to enter grass covers. So if I click on grass covers on the top left it brings me into an initial screen that shows all of the recordings that's been done in the year to date. Um, up here um, the print walk input sheet is quite useful as a printout to have in the parlor from week to week and record any grazing dates and also use it as the basis of your walk uh, every week. If I just enter on new grass covers um, it brings me into a screen where I can record the date, the soil, the temperature, um, the rainfall. And one of the options here, which is an optional extra, you don't have to go with this, but I would, we would recommend it. And the little I symbol explains what it's for. And any place where we feel you need a little bit of help with the software, we always include a, an I symbol like that. Um, but the best way to describe this is to actually show you a little schematic about what we mean. If I just bring up a kind of a schema showing you uh, let's say you're measuring every Monday, so you're measuring four Mondays in a row. And between this Monday and this Monday, um, the grass has been growing and there's been no grazing. So the growth is the is the yellow line. You know, the paddock grew from that to that in that week. And if let's say that the grass was grazed in this week here, so technically we don't know how much grass grew in that week. And then next Monday we have the growth from that Monday to the following Monday. So usually in a lot of cases, software won't know the um, the growth in that week. What the uh, AgriNet software will do in this case is we'll calculate the growth this week, we'll calculate the growth on this week, and we'll apply that growth uh, on average to the week in the, in the middle where we're missing. That's the week when the actual cows went in and grazed off the paddock. Now one of the things we've discovered if we make an effort to actually record the growth in that paddock it does make a difference to the growth. So we have the same um, four weeks here, Monday, 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 and Monday. But in the week that the cows grazed it, we have we record, let's say that we we measured on a Monday, we measured on the following Monday. But let's say then on Friday, for example, we grazed the cows. And if you record the cover that the cows went in at, so let's say here the cover is um, 2,000, and let's say here the cover when the cows went in is 2,500. Well, that means it grew 500 during that period. And then the, the short little point here would be the residual. So let's assume you grazed down to 1500 and then the following Monday the grass was at 1700. So then we'd know that the grass grew from 1500 to 1700 over the weekend. We add that growth over the weekend with the growth during the week and then we can calculate a growth across this uh, week when the cows actually grazed out the paddock. And it does actually make a difference because in most cases because the paddock is going to be eaten that week that paddock has the heaviest cover during that week. So technically it's always going to grow a little bit better. So we've noticed in the past that if you make a, an effort to record the cover as the cows go in and record the cover, or what we call the pre-cover and the post-cover, uh, post-cover is obviously the same as residual, it does make a difference in terms of having a better estimate of farm growth. So if I just hide that down again. So that's what we mean here that you're saying that um, on average during the week that I've been, that over the last week, on average the cows were going in at 2,800 and the cows were coming out at 1,500. Now again, if you decide, look, I don't really want to bother with that deal, you just take the tick out of there and then our software will behave in a much um, uh, simpler way and where you don't, uh, you don't have to put in the pre-cover and the post-cover as the cows come in, go into the paddock and as the cows come out. But let's say I, I choose the option to go for this extra bit of detail and extra kind of quality in grass growth. So I then click on continue. And what it's doing next is bringing up a screen where I do my data entry. Uh, I have all of my covers from last week. So I have 15, 1600 as the cover in paddocks number one and two last week. And then what I do is I click in here and I start recording my covers this week. So I just click in 1600. I can usually, and I recommend it using the enter key and the keyboard to go quickly from box to box. So I'm going down like that. So I'm just going to go down, I'm going to put in a full cover the whole way down. Um, it doesn't take too long. Um, it'll take a lot longer to actually walk the farm. Um, so I come down here and go 2400. And then let's say this one here, let's say that this one is actually um, 300. And what's happening here is if I go down to the next box, hit enter, the program knows that there's something going on here because last year, now that's 20. 300 is obviously way too low, so I'll click back in there and type in, say, 1700. So we know something has happened. So obviously the grass was not growing during that week, so something has happened in between. So the options you have is to say, look, the paddock was grazed out. 
So if the paddock was grazed out, then the system says, okay, well, when was it grazed out? So there's a little drop-down menu, and it'll show you all the dates between this week's cover and last week's cover. So let's say I'm measuring on, on the 1st of March, which is a Tuesday, and then I'd say, well, this paddock was grazed on Sunday. And see the way it brings in the default cover for the paddocks on the way in? And then I have 1500 as the residual on the way out. But you can say, well, this one is actually a particularly heavy paddock, so the cows went in and this one is at 3000. And then we can use that because we know that the paddock went from 2400 last week. The cows went in when it was at 3000, so that was a growth of 600 in the period. And then the cows grazed it down to 1500. And the following week, the following Monday, it was at 700, so it grew 200 over those few days. Um, so that's where we're, we're looking for the extra detail and we would recommend going for that. It's not that difficult to do. The other thing that we would be um, keen on as well is that if I come in here and I say that this one was um, 1600 and one of the options that is um, we would like to draw your attention to is the area of silage cut. I think it's important to make an effort to record the silage is cut because if you have a paddock that's out for six or seven weeks during those six or seven weeks there's no growth measurements being done on the paddock so it's very hard for a software to estimate how quickly the grass is growing in that paddock which could be out for six weeks and indeed it could be out for another six weeks afterwards when I was taking first cut silage, second cut silage. So we would very much recommend you know identifying paddocks that have been cut for silage and in that case we just want to know the same thing you know when did you cut the paddock and what was the what was the cover so if you have a very strong cut of silage then it might be around 6,000 kilos of dry matter per hectare and then what was the cover in the paddock when the mower was finished and again we can use that data quite effectively at the end of the year when we're estimating the total tonnage produced per hectare on each paddock and then getting the average tonnage produced across the entire farm having a, a, an exact picture of silage cut off individual paddocks either by round bales or by, by um, long-term silage is quite important it does add to the quality of the detail at the, the, the end of the year Another option that we have, which we've noticed last year, is something that's relevant to have, is that if you go into a paddock where the cows are actually grazing and you, you get an estimate of the cover in that paddock, but it's the, the cows are still eating the paddock, so we have another option which is called a park grazed. And park grazed does make a difference in terms of growth calculations because we'll know that we there's no way we can estimate growth on paddock number 12 in that period. But we'll know um, when we get to the next Monday, we will be able to do something with that paddock because we know it was finished grazing. Um, tomorrow so in seven days time when we graze again we'll be able to calculate growth and over that period so again what I'm trying to do is show you how to pick the four possible options here we have growing we have grazed out we have silage cut and we have part grazed Now, obviously the most normal one will be that you have it it'll just be growing and that's the default so if I keep coming down and I go 1600 1700 I go 1800 again I'm just putting in data quickly to show you how to get it in. Um, 20, oops. 22. And when you get down to the bottom you just click on save. And as soon as you click on save it'll bring you into the grass wedge. And I'm actually going to leave it there for this video and uh, I'll do the grass wedge in a, in a later video.